Uh, today I'll be demonstrating the alignment process um, as much as I can from beginning to end. I'm going to point out some particular things about alignments that you should be aware of, um, but please understand there's many, many uh, aspects of an alignment that you'll learn as you do uh, alignments over and over and over again. We're using a uh, Hunter uh, machine, wh which is uh, their trademark called WinAlign, and we'll be following uh, the instructions. I'll show you how the, the machine sort of walks you through the process of setting everything up. We'll take a look at the settings once we get the, um, all of the uh, heads compensated, and we'll talk about what those settings mean as far as um, how the car would handle and what kind of symptoms the customer may be involved with. Um, and we'll also talk about how to make some uh, preliminary adjustments. So here we go. When you're, uh, when you're first setting the car up on the rack, um, normally you're going to have someone guide you up um, on the rack. This is a this is a ramp type alignment rack that is typical for uh, alignment shops. Um, the other style that you might see is a, uh, just a, a, a floor drive up with a pit. Um, that's um, kind of gone by the wayside. Most places don't use a pit anymore. Uh, they use this type of a rack. This is called a scissor jack, and uh, um, you'll see why it's called that when I lift it up. So when you, when you drive the car up on the rack, you're going to center the tires on these uh, turn plates. And if, we're going to pause the video for just a second. I'm going to show you an example of a turn plate. So the turn plate is similar to this. This is actually one that would be on the left side because you drive up here. But when you, when you drive the car up, you're going to want to center the tire on the turn plate this way. And then as you had, have someone guide you up, you're going to want to center the middle of the wheel uh, to the center of this circle. So the tire perfectly in this circle if you can. As you do the alignment, uh, these pins are pulled and the, the tire turns on the turn plate. So having it in the center gives you the most accurate readings. So you can see the cars uh, pulled up on the rack in the center of the turn plates both uh, centered side to side and front to back. We made sure these pins were in the turn plates because these turn plates are free floating without those pins and it's more secure to drive it up when the pins are in. So you're going to go to the back and you're going to put the uh, the chocks on the tire so it doesn't roll. Um, you leave the car in neutral and with the brake off and the steering wheel unlocked so everything's movable. So if you don't block the car, it could literally roll off the rack. Okay, next we're going to go to the machine and we're going to tell it uh, to begin an alignment. And it's going to uh, walk us through entering the specifications for the vehicle. So first, this is a uh, Toyota Prius. And it happens to be a 2010. Uh, it has 195, 65, 15 tires. And it does not have a rough road package. Okay, the next screen wants to know, does it have a lane departure warning system? That's the system where when you're driving down the road, if you start to weave uh, you know, out of your lane, that it beeps and sends you back in the lane. And what that means is it has cameras or some other mechanism that uh, keeps you straight. And that means the computer needs to know the direction you're steering. So all that gets involved in an alignment. This car doesn't happen to have that, so we're going to uncheck that. And then the other thing it's telling you is that this vehicle may be equipped with an electronic stability control system. So that's another system that deals with the wheel alignment. And uh, again, it needs to know the position of the steering wheel. It also deals with braking. If you should apply the brakes on a wet road and a couple of your tires uh, lose traction and, you, and your car starts to move one way or the other, um, cars with this electronic stability to control have the ability to sort of recover things for you and they'll brake uh, certain wheels and they'll, they'll um, try to stabilize you instead of fishtailing out of control. 
So all that depends on the steering sensor knowing when the tires are pointed perfectly straight. So at the end of the alignment, if it does have that uh, system and you have to reset it, there's an extra piece of equipment you'll plug in to the uh, onboard diagnostics connector, the OBD2 connector, which is under the left side of the dash. And we would just walk through what the machine tells us to do, and it would uh, tell us to steer straight ahead, and then tell the computer once we're steering straight ahead, and we tell the computer with this device. These are the specifications for this car. Uh, well, let's talk about them for a minute. Remember, caster is the setting that's responsible for tracking. The more positive caster you have, the more you're able to sort of let go of the wheel and it'll go straight down the road. Um, it also returns when you turn a corner. It's, that's the setting that helps your wheel return to center. On a car like this, um, they're going to have a, um, they're gonna, it's going to be more for comfort, so you're going to see this almost six degree positive angle on the, uh, on the caster. Um, a, a car like a Jeep or something where they don't expect it, uh, they, they expect you to have a little more hands-on control of the car, you'll see this number quite a bit lower. Uh, our camber settings um, up here, uh, minus 0.22 degrees, so that is the tire leaning in just just a hair. Um, specification also has a tolerance. So if you take away 0.75 degrees from this 0.22 degrees, the total would be 0.970 degrees. So nearly one degree negative would still be within tolerance. If you add the 75 to the 22, that comes out to a positive 53. So that would be a positive half a degree. So within specification, you can alter the settings all the way from a half degree positive to a degree negative and still be within specification. Uh, the caster has a tolerance too of three quarters of a degree. So you could go three quarters of a degree either way. And then the last setting we can see here is uh, the toe setting. So this, uh, even though this is a front wheel drive car, they have it uh, slightly towed in, uh, just, just ever so much 0 0.20 degrees. Um, your rear has settings also, although these aren't adjustable. So they have your um, camber uh, tilted in a degree and a half with a half degree tolerance. So you would look at these numbers if the car had been in a wreck or something like that, and you'd want to see these numbers close to specification, or you might need to do some framework on it. And the toe, again, slightly in on the rear. Okay, um, we're going to go forward, and we're going to mount the sensors and do what's called a compensation. So the machine starts telling you what to do here. Uh, you notice the mount sensors is in the green, so we're going to click that. And it wants us to uh, mount the sensors. Now, on, on the screen, you can see here it's showing our camera, our, our tower with the cameras in it. And we're going to have to mount these four sensors to get these, uh, red, um, dis these red dots on the display to go away. And then it says uh, view targets. So they call these targets or sensors. And we're going to go ahead and set those up. The sensor uh, is really a, a, a reflector that the camera sees. And when you mount it, you look at the, the diagram here, and it tells you what tire to mount it on. So this is the right front, uh, the sensor that goes on the right front. The one, one thing the machine does not tell you to do, it does not tell you to lift the vehicle. Um, we could mount the sensors with the vehicle on the floor, but if we raise the vehicle, it's much more comfortable for us to mount the sensors, and it's easier on our back. So let's go ahead and do that. So target number one, I'm going to put this on the front. Um, you want to kind of center it on the wheel, and then these arms need to be at 9 and 3 o'clock. These are spring-loaded. 
So you squeeze them in and catch one of the ribs in the tire. You just sort of ballpark this in the center of the wheel. It doesn't have to be exact. And then lock it down. Uh, these arms are set up for smaller wheels. They have two other sizes. So for a larger truck, you would use this one. This is actually adjustable, so you can go to, to uh, much, much larger wheels. And then you have this one, which is sort of a mid-sized arm. These arms can be replaced by just pulling these pins. So whichever one you need, you set, you set them up this way. When you mount the rear sensor, you're going to wonder if you mounted it in correctly, because if you look at the front sensor, this angle here seems to make sense as it points towards the camera. But as we mount the rear sensor, uh, if we put the arms at 9 and 3 o'clock, you can see the sensor is almost pointing down. Um, but that is correct uh, as far as the position of the center, sensor. So again, hook those into the ribs of the, the grooves of the tire, uh, sort of center that, and lock it down. And we'll do the two sensors on the other side here. Okay, if you view the screen here, you notice that the red uh, indicators have disappeared on three of the sensors. I'm getting ready to mount the fourth one. You want to keep an eye on this. Um, that'll tell you if you're mounting the targets in, in the correct place. If, one of, if this doesn't disappear when you mount the fourth target, then you can take a look by clicking on View Targets, and you can see what the, what the targets are looking at. So there's, there's the camera seeing three of the four targets. And if it doesn't see the target, then you can figure out what your problem is. So, so far, so good. We'll put the fourth one on. And now you notice that that prompt has disappeared. So let's read our instructions. It says, uh, mount this. It, told us to mount the sensors. Next, we're doing what's called a rolling compensation. So it says, uh, put the pins in the turn plates and slip plates. Make sure these pins are in. If you pulled the car up onto the turn plates, you should have had the pins in place. So basically, the machine's telling us to, to make sure they're in. There are slide plates on the back, and the pins are in the back as well. Uh, next, the machine tells us to uh, raise the turn plate bridges, and that's these bars right here. So if they're laying down, you want to raise them up. And what that does is that fills the space as the tires need to roll over this area. It makes them roll over easier. Next, it tells us to block the wheels with a rolling safety block. Uh, steer ahead. Okay, so these were all the instructions to mount the targets. So the machine now says, roll the vehicle towards the rear. So um, this is a uh, Prius, so we're going to have to get in and start it and back it up. And you'll see what happens when we roll it to the rear. These arrows will move back or move down on the display. And the green area will enlarge. And this arrow, you want to stop to where it's kind of in the middle, although it's, it'll work if you're off a little, ho a little low or a little high. So I'm going to go in the back, and I'm going to show you what to do with the block that's behind the rear wheel. So th the front block stays where it's at. We're going to want to roll the car back. So I'm going to take this rear block, and I'm going to move it back directly in line with the tire. So as I back up the car, there's no chance I could roll off the rack. So I'm just going to move that behind the tire, and then I'm going to get inside the car, and I'm going to roll it back. So you'll notice on the screen that those prompts have now disappeared. That means you did the compensation correctly. Um, what it's telling us to do now is block the wheels again, lower those turn plate bridges, 
and pull the pins from the slip plates and the turn plates. We're going to pull the, plan, the pins from the turn plates, uh, but not the slip plates. This car doesn't have rear alignment, so we don't have to do anything with the rear. So we'll lower the bridges. I'm going to move this block back up. And then I'm going to pull these pins out. Okay, next is we're ready. And uh, this is where you would enter the ride height um, if you have measured that. Ride height on this vehicle, you're normally going to take from where the tire sets to the top of the fender well. And that would give you your ride height front and rear. You could enter those numbers. I should tell you that this number doesn't have uh, any effect on the alignment. This is a number that you enter stri strictly for the customer's benefit. Uh, it's possible later on as we do the alignment that um, you may have to reference this when you're talking to the customer about a particular setting that won't go into specification. So if the car was crooked, so to speak, if it was lower on one side than the other, you may have a spring issue with that, with that side. And this is where you would uh, show the customer, and you can see that it it gives you a um, it gives you a number in the middle, which would tell you the difference from left to right. And you can use that in explaining certain settings to the customer. Um, we're going to call it even for this vehicle. And now you can see it's starting to give us our preliminary readings. Um, the short answer is everything in the green is within specification, everything in red is out of specification. Notice that we have a camber reading, left and right, and what's called cross camber, which is really uh, the difference between left and right. Uh, we have a left and right toe setting, and we have on the rear a left and right camber. Uh, they're exactly the same, so there's no cross camber difference and we have a left and right toe setting. And this is not a cross toe setting, this is a total. So if you take 10 plus 22, you end up with 32. Minus 102 plus minus 25 is a minus 127. So uh, in the front, the tires are towed out. In the rear, the tires are towed in. Um, thrust angle, this is basically the exact direction the rear tires are pointing. I'll show you more of that on a different screen. We don't see one number here. We don't see caster. Um, remember, caster is a number that the machine has to pick up when the tires are turned. So uh, since we haven't turned the tires yet from left to right, the machine has no way to tell us what caster is. So uh, I'm going to follow the machine's instructions and get a caster reading. And what it tells us to do is install the brake depressor. So this is the brake depressor here. Um, what we do is we push this down on the brake pedal and we put this pad against the seat and hold this bar and shove it down like that and it'll put the brake on. Uh, when, when we start to turn the wheels, the, we don't want the wheels turning front to rear. Caster is an angle that gets picked up from the spindle angle. And I've explained that in different videos. So if the car is able to turn, um, it'll think that the caster is changing. So we don't want the car to roll forward or backwards. We want it to only turn the wheels, and that way you can see whatever this angle is. So I'm going to put the brake depressor on, then I'm going to start the vehicle and turn the wheels as the machine directs me to. So we're going to put the brake pedal depressor on and again we take the rod, we push it on the brake pedal and then we pull this back against the seat. Now notice I put it off center from the middle of, of the steering wheel because in another step the machine is going to ask us to put in this steering wheel lock. When we put this lock in we place it under the steering wheel, go down and let it come up under the steering wheel and lock it straight. So that's not a step we're going to do now, but that is a reason I'm putting this brake pedal off center. 
If you want to tighten this brake pedal up, if you have electric seats, you, you can move the seat forward a little bit and that'll squeeze the brakes even more. One other thing I want to mention, this of course turns the brake lights on. So if you are aligning a car that has a, a battery that's um, close to the end of its service life, um, this is a good way to, to run the battery down and not be able to start the car when you get done. So that's just something to be aware of if you're working on a car that has an old battery in it. So on this step, um, we're going to need to turn the wheels a certain number of degrees to the right and a certain number of degrees to the left and then back to the center. Uh, you can stand outside the vehicle and do this because at this point the machine is only concerned with what's happening on the front tires. So the fact that I'm blocking the sensors from the cameras to the rear, I've got the door open, that doesn't matter because we're only concerned with the front. Okay, so here we go. Uh, the machine's telling me to turn to the left. So I'm going to put it in the green. It picked it up. Now I'm going to go past the straight ahead position and I'm going to turn the machine to the right. And it picked that up. Now it's telling me to turn, go straight again. Okay, at this point, uh, it says save the before alignment measurements. So I'm going to straighten the steering wheel and I'm going to put on that previously mentioned lock. If you save the before measurements, what it'll do is it'll store those measurements in the computer and it'll, you'll be able to give the customer a printout of the before and after settings. So that way the customer knows you actually did some work on the car. So we're going to hit save before. And it wants us to put the steering wheel level. Uh, I already did that. And this car happens to be out of alignment quite a bit. So um, it, it, all it's asking us here is uh, what the condition was before the alignment. Um, I know the steering wheel was crooked. So it says uh, the steering wheel was not level before the alignment. I'm going to click that. And again, the computer doesn't really do anything with that information other than print it out on the final printout, and that's just for the customer's benefit. So when we're done with that, we click Ready. And now we can talk about what we see as far as settings. Uh, first of all, you're going to see on this display that Everything that is wrong with this car is exaggerated, or even things that are right with the car are exaggerated. We know that the rear tires are supposed to be tilted in a little bit. Remember, we were looking at the specifications, and they were supposed to be 1.48 degrees tilted in. Well, these are 1.6 degrees tilted in, which is within specifications still. It's in the green. And the sides are even, so they're showing those tires tilted in. It's also towed in a tiny bit, um, 0.11 on each side for a total, or 0.11 on the left side, 0.22 on the right side. So that is also showing the tires they're leaning in and pointing in. Uh, the third setting we can see from the back is what's called the thrust angle. As much as possible, we want this to be zero. It's really the difference between how the tires are pointed. And I'm going to, uh, once I get done talking about the front settings, I'm going to show you what happens when the rear toe is, is changed. So let's move to the front. Uh, the front, the camber, uh, remember that specification was almost straight up. I think it was 0.20 negative, um, and it had a three-quarter degree uh, window that we could adjust it in, uh, three-quarter degree tolerance. So um, we're within specifications on both sides. The, um, the, the left side is pretty much straight up and down. It's barely tilted out. The right side is barely tilted in, 0.4 degrees. So that's fine. This is uh, not going to wear tires, not going to cause any pulling issue. On camber and caster, the magic number is one degree. If the left side is one degree different than the right side, or the right side is one degree different than the left side, the, the car is likely going to pull. So we're looking for a one degree difference 
on camber or a one degree difference from on caster. We do have a one degree difference in caster as you can see here. But the toe setting is so far off, I'm going to wait to make a judgment on that caster setting because it's going to change a little bit when I adjust the toe. So I'm going to plug a device in here and I'm going to show you what happens on the rear when the thrust angle is off. So this tool here, this is a training tool and allows me to uh, put up settings on the screen and talk about them. So remember we were talking about the thrust angle and that's the direction that the rear tires are pointing. Um, you notice I've got this set up to where the thrust angle is zero. So 0 0.03 on each side. So these tires are virtually pointed straight ahead and the thrust angle is zero. Now let's say the right tire is kicked in a little bit. It's towed in too far. So let's bring that in about a degree or, or uh, yeah, let's try and find a degree here. That's close enough. Um, well, remember, everything was in the green, but because this tire is kicked in now, notice your settings on the front actually show in the red. So what they're doing is the front tires are referencing that center line of the rear. So on the front, when the driver, if the driver had this condition on his car with this right tire kicked in, that's going to take the rear of the car and swing it to the left as he's driving down the road. So his car is going to feel like it's pulling to the right when it's really the back is going to the left. So in order to steer this car straight, he's going to have to turn the front wheels to the left to make it go straight. That, what that results in is a crooked steering wheel. So now in order for this car to go straight down the road, the driver is going to actually have to turn his wheel to the left a little bit and also the rear is not going to follow the front. So he's, he's going to have the rear coming like this if you compare the rear to the front. You've probably seen these cars on the highway where they look like they're going kind of crooked. They call it crabbing. And so um, this is the condition that causes crabbing is when the rear thrust angle is not the same angle as the, as the straight ahead position of the vehicle. Okay, we're going to go back to live settings. So in order to adjust this vehicle, one thing we have to recognize is the steering wheel is very crooked. Um, I locked it down straight, so when I make my adjustments, I'm going to make quite an adjustment on the left side and a small adjustment on the right side to make it go to the center. Um, we'll look at caster once we adjust toe. Now we know the normal order of adjustment is rear camber, rear toe, front caster, front camber, front toe. The machine lines them up a little bit different, camber toe, camber caster toe, it'll work that way too. But generally speaking, we save the toe for last. Uh, and we do the rear first because we want that thrust, thrust angle to be straight, and then we do the front. But in this case, since this side is so far off, I need to get this in the picture to make my final judgments on everything. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust this side in and we're going to talk about adjusting this side here on a uh, rack and pinion that I have out of a vehicle. So the reason I wanted to use this rack and pinion is because it's set up very closely to how this car is set up. Notice <clears throat> on the tie rod ends, these are what you use to adjust the toe. Notice that this tie rod end has maybe an inch and a half of threads showing. Go over to this tie rod end we have less than a half an inch of threads showing. So that tells you right there that this, somebody may have adjusted the toe incorrectly. They extended this one out um, quite a ways and that one's in. This, unless something is bent on this vehicle, this would likely have a crooked steering wheel. So this is the situation that's happening on the Prius, is we have one side turned way out and the other one turned out only a little. One other condition can exist that would cause this, and that's if a technician replaced these tie rod ends and didn't install them correctly. So when you replace tie rod ends, generally speaking, you want to get the same number of threads on the left and the right. So uh, 
this is the adjustment I'm going to make. I'm going to take the one side and I'm going to turn it quite a ways in here. I want to show you one more thing out from underneath the car. Um, when you loosen these nuts, this nut is locked against this tie rod end. So you don't hold this inner tie rod end, you have to hold the outer tie rod end. So we, we use a wrench to hold the outer tie rod end, and then we put a wrench on the bolt. Now the easiest way to loosen this bolt, you know, we could struggle and pull and our hands slip and it bangs and, and uh, hurts our elbow or something, or you can set your wrenches up just like I have here and grab them both and just squeeze. And that's the way to loosen that nut without much effort. So again, just set your wrenches up to where they're apart from each other. You know, turn them around however you need to do so they're not next to each other like this, but they're apart. And then just squeeze. And notice I'm holding the outside tie rod end with one wrench and I'm loosening the lock nut with the other wrench. So now that this is loose, I can back it up. I know I'm going to screw this in quite a ways, so I'm going to have to back this nut off quite a ways. And then I'm going to take a wrench and put it on this rod and I'm going to turn it in. Before I do that, I'm going to take this clamp here and I'm going to take it off the, what's called the bellows boot because as I turn this tie rod in, this bellows boot will get all twisted if I don't take this clamp off. So I'll be doing all that underneath the car. So one nice thing this machine has is it will walk you through the possible adjustments on this vehicle. So if we can either open up this menu on the bottom like this, uh, or we can just go down to this last square here, click on it, and illustrate adjustments. So the first thing it tells us is about that electronic stability control. Next illustration. The manufacturer does not specify rear camber and toe adjustments, so there's no way to adjust the rear. Uh, the manufacturer does not specify a front caster adjustment. There's no way to adjust front caster. Now, this is a front camber adjustment. What they're telling us is if we loosen these two bolts on the uh, front strut, we can get a minimal amount of movement on the spindle um, it, it's very little though, um, you know, we might get a quarter of a degree or something if we loosen those bolts and move this. And there might not be any adjustment at all because it, it may already be pushed to the limits of the adjustment. So um, really this car does not have camber adjustments like most cars do. And then the last adjustment, well here's those tie rod ends I just showed you. Uh, this is how we're going to be adjusting the front. So you can go through these screens and see how to adjust it if you're Still uh, wondering, this machine also has uh, videos and you can let it walk you through uh, adjusting, for instance, the front toe. I'm not going to play this whole thing, but I'll let you see a little bit of it. For most rack and pinion steering systems, individual toe adjustments are provided at each tie rod assembly. Okay, so that would be one way to. Um, you know, to verify how you're going to adjust the vehicle. Uh, one other thing, the machine has the ability to uh, show you common tools that may be used on this vehicle, and in this case they don't have any tools loaded, um, but that is a screen that's available on some vehicles. Okay, back to our adjustments. So right now we're focused on the front toe. That's really the only thing adjustable on this vehicle. Uh, so um, I'm going to start here with the worst side, and we can look at different, we can focus on different parts of the vehicle um, by going to bar graphs, and here's the front. There's that big toe adjustment I'm trying to move, and I'm going to try and get this with X, it'll turn into an arrow when I get it closer here. So as you adjust, um, you can just start turning the tie rod end. And if you're going the right direction, you'll see the numbers start to move down. Okay. 
we're not going to see any difference on that right side caster because we're working on the left side. Remember our specification was uh, 0 0.10, 0 0.11 actually, positive. So there's the left side, and we'll go ahead and adjust the right side. And generally speaking, you want to, just for the customer's benefit, you want to match the left and the right. Um, as I'm moving this, it's barely moving. But there you go. So we've done everything, and notice the caster changed just a little bit. We've done pretty much everything we can do on this vehicle. Um, the rear was good when we started. The fronts had this wild toe setting. Uh, the left side was uh, kicked way out. Um, but, but now it's good, it's towed in uh, 0.11 on each side. So this means the steering wheel should probably be straight. One more thing about this setting. Now notice how these differences changed. It used to be over a degree, now it's only 0.7 from left to right. A half a degree is, is a, an area of concern. One degree pretty much will cause a pull. A half a degree may or may not. So in this case, you would talk to the customer about the fact that caster is not adjustable. Uh, the right side is um, 0.7 degrees lower than the left side. It's less positive. A car will pull to the less positive or more negative side. So you would tell the customer you might have a slight drift to the right. Um, it's nothing wrong with the alignment. We've got it as close as we can. And uh, you may just have to live with that symptom. Uh, one thing you can do um, is test drive this car and see what happens. If it has a slight pull to the right, the customer will have to steer to the left a little bit to make it go straight. If that's the case, if you want to, you can go back and play with the toe adjustment so that steering wheel is actually straight when it's going down the road. Other than that, uh, this alignment is set up. It's ready to print out, and you can show the customer the before and after settings. Uh, make sure that you lock down the tie rod ends. And um, one thing I recommend when you've made a large adjustment on the front end is uh, go ahead and throw a tape measure across the front tires. When you make a big adjustment, you don't want to, uh, it's, you know, cars don't usually come in with, with two degrees difference in the front toe. So if you're making that big of adjustment, you just want to make sure you haven't made some kind of mistake when you set up the, um, the heads and compensated. So you might just go ahead and throw a tape measure on the front tires to verify that they're pretty much pointing straight ahead. Um, that's about on it on this alignment. We would uh, finish our adjustment by going to the uh, print screen. And it shows you here what the printout will look like for the customer. And you can see the before and after readings here. And this is where you talk to the customer about what you changed and what kind of benefit um, it'll be to the customer. So you can see differences in the front toe. You can see differences in the total toe setting from a minus 126 to a 0.22, which is exactly within specification. And you'll also see a difference in the uh, thrust angle, which uh, doesn't seem to be, oh yeah, here it is, right here. So we, we see this little bit of offset on the thrust angle on the rear, and you might talk to the customer about that, but again, there was no way we could change that adjustment. Okay, that's it, I hope that was helpful. Thanks very much, everyone.